Live from the Posh Studios of Brayburn's Worldwide Headquarters, it is time for Tech Support with Tony. That's right everybody, it's time for Tech Support and I'm Tony. So today we're going to talk about some very important stuff. Our wireless thermostat kits. I get a lot of questions regarding wiring the thermostat control module. So I'm talking about two specific products today. We have our model 7500 wireless thermostat kit and our newly released model 8500 wireless thermostat kit. Both of these products use the same control module. The control module is the component that gets wired to your HVAC equipment, whether that's a gas furnace, heat pump, hydronic zone valve, it's all the same. The control module, the cover comes off, exposes a circuit board. On the circuit board, there is a blue connection block right here where we connect all of our wires coming from the HVAC equipment itself. Each one's got different terminals, labels, R, Y, W, G, C, O, B, all the terminals that you would expect to see on a thermostat that you would be wiring. This communicates wirelessly to the thermostat. This you're going to place somewhere in the vicinity of your heating and air conditioning equipment or zone valves and then you can place the thermostat somewhere in the home that's a suitable placement. No wires connecting these two together. This is your wireless communication. This unit requires 24 volt power source. So this is something that's common across all of the applications. Gas furnace, heat pump, hydronic system. In every case we need to power this with 24 volt power and we're going to get that directly from our system. The control board has RH and RC terminals located down here and those are factory jumpered on the circuit board through this little black jumper. It's labeled J3 on the circuit board. When that jumper's in place, RH and RC are effectively one terminal. If you remove that jumper, it separates RC and RH, and that will come important in one of these installations. In most cases, we're going to leave that jumper in place as, you, as it came out of the box. In addition, in the box you get this plenum sensor. This has to be connected in every application. If you do not connect it, your thermostat is going to display an error down here that says plenum sensor loss and that will be always showing until this sensor is connected. So heat pump, gas furnace, hydronic system, we need to connect that sensor. We'll go into some details about that in a little bit. So wiring the control module, depending on your system, we're going to go over some of the basic wiring configurations. Let's say you've got a conventional gas furnace with central air. Very common application, millions of homes across the country with something like this. So this is pretty straightforward type installation. We're going to be using five wires. We're going to be connecting five wires to the control module. Our plenum sensor is going to go to P1 and P2. You're going to bring your blower fan wire and connect it to the G terminal. 
your 24 volt power wire will go to either RC or RH remember that is jumpered on the circuit board so that covers both of them your heat control wire or your furnace control wire that will go to W1 your cooling control wire will go to Y1 and then your 24 volt common wire will go to C this is important without this wire we will not have power for the control module. The power is served to us by R and C. Those two wires power this control module. Without power, you're not going anywhere. We need to have this powered up. So a conventional gas with central air is going to require a minimum of five wires for it to operate properly. So that's one type of installation. Another common installation is a heat pump, a single stage heat pump with auxiliary heat. Whether it's electric strip heat or gas furnace, the wiring is going to be the same. Single stage heat pump, wiring, again we're going to have the plenum sensor connected to P1 and P2 on the control module. Your blower fan wire is going to go to G. Your 24 volt power wire is going to go to RH and RC, which again are factory jumpered on the circuit board. Your auxiliary heat wire, whether it's gas or electric, we're going to connect that to the W2 terminal, but then we're going to make a little wire jumper and go over to the W1 terminal. W2 is labeled W2 aux and W1 is labeled W1E. One is an auxiliary call, one is an emergency call. There's a difference there. We need to connect those with a jumper. Heat pump systems have a component known as a reversing valve or a changeover valve. Your reversing valve wire or your changeover valve wire needs to connect to the terminal that's labeled V3 slash O slash B. This will be determined in the installer menu setup, which will be explained in a different video. This is just covering wiring. Your heat pump compressor control wire connects to Y1, and then of course your 24 volt common wire connects to C. Again, the C and the R H R C wires provide power for this control module. These wires are typically coming from your air handler to the control module. So that's a heat pump system. A lot of people call and they have just a basic hydronic zone valve currently using two wires to the thermostat which is fine. You've got a mechanical thermostat or a battery operated thermostat. Two wires is all you need to close the circuit and energize your valve. However, if you're using this wireless thermostat kit, once again, we still need to power that control module. So we're going to need to provide power. So in this application, a basic hydronic zone valve application, here's your 24 volt power transformer. You got two terminals, a hot and a common. Here's our control module. The 24, the transformer hot lead is going to come down to the RH, RC terminals that are jumpered on from the factory. Your common tap off of your transformer needs to go to the common terminal, the C terminal on the control module. Your zone valve is going to have two wires. One wire you're going to connect to W1 on the controller, the other wire is going to tap into that common. So essentially you'll have two wires going to the common terminal. One from here and one from here. That way when the control module calls for heat it closes this circuit and sends power to the zone valve and then back to the common. That's for a basic hydronic zone valve setup. All right, now some of you have a hydronic system that uses 
some sort of zone controller. Maybe it's a one zone controller or a six zone controller, whatever be the case. Um, a lot of them like popular Taco controllers and they'll have a TT connection that your current thermostat is wired to and you need to close those TT connections to energize that particular zone valve. We can still do this with this wireless thermostat kit but it takes a little different wiring. This one is a little unique. So with this application we're going to need a separate dedicated 24 volt power transformer to power the control module. We have a 24 volt transformer here again with your common and hot terminals. Hot is going to connect to the RC terminal and common is going to go to the C terminal. This application here we must remove that jumper that I showed you in the beginning. The RHRC terminal jumper number J3 on the circuit board. This jumper needs to be removed in this application. We're going to remove that jumper then we can connect your TT terminals from your zone controller to RH and W1 respectively. When the control module calls for heat it closes this terminal which closes your TT and allows your zone to run independent of the power that's coming down here. Again we still need to connect the P1 and P2 to that plenum sensor else you'll be getting an error message on your thermostat indicating that the plenum sensor is not there. This is what we call the dry contact method. We're using this simply as a dry contact no power applied. So a lot of different uh, zone control systems use something like that. So for an application like that you need a separate 24 volt power source to power the control module. Remember pull that jumper. Very important. Otherwise you'll be crossing voltages from the transformer to the zone controller. Okay, so if I haven't covered anything that you're coming up with in your application, give me a call. I'll take your support calls Monday through Friday, Central Time, 8 till 5. You'll find the phone number in the video description. I can help you out with most any application. We'll talk it through. We'll figure it out. I'll make another video that kind of goes over some of your installer menu setup parameters, system types, reversing valve types, all of those. That's a whole different video. Give me a call, I'll help you out.